There is no political party that has the legal authority to remove a parliamentary commissioner. The only authority a party has over a commissioner is nomination. The actual appointment is done by members of parliament themselves through a vote in the House. And to remove the, such a person, our rules of procedure provide that you must have more than half of all the members of parliament agree to it. If not, it remains a wish and perhaps a political instrument for public. If the money is the issue, we should be explaining to the public how, such that the parliament can get objective feedback from the public, but not alarming the public to think everything being done by government institutions is evil. Other than the president of the country, General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, every political high or high-ranking politician in Uganda is paid benefits by parliament. Why isn't there whole level about that? I can inform the country that from the vice president to any other high ranking, all their benefits, whether medical or whether what, is paid by parliament. If parliament has all that authority to pay a monument for, a monument and benefits for all the high ranking top politicians, except the president, why are we cherry picking on Honorable Matthias Mpoga? If it is for new politics, I surrender my hands, I have no say there. If it is to paint one politician as evil, that is now something we have to debate as the public. We have the law, the Administration of Parliaments Act, which sets up the Parliamentary Commission. The Parliamentary Commission is like the prefect of MPs in relation to remuneration. Now, the Commission designs payment for all members of Parliament, for all staffs, for themselves, for the speakers. It's in the law, section 32 of the Administration of Parliaments Act. So the question is, is what the Parliamentary Commission doing legal? I would say yes, it is legal. Is what they are doing ethical or right? I would say no. But the issues of morality, you cannot resolve it in the legal realm. My counsel Jude knows. It goes to jurisprudence. What is good for you is not good for me. What is good for me is not good for you. But the challenge is the parliamentary commission sits in a commission and allocates themselves any amount of money. Get it from me. We are just talking about the 500 million bonanza. Mm. They allocate themselves salaries over and above that of MPs. They have vehicles. They have fuel. The commissioners. The commissioners. Right. They right. have a budget for travel abroad. The last time I left Parliament, each commission had about two billion for travel ab abroad. Annually. Annually, each commissioner. So when we are talking about the 500 million, we lose it. So we have been ripping. We have been ripping the country. So Mpuga is a victim of a, a bad situation that there is bad politics inside NUP. Noob should know that all political parties have problems. So the, the, the way they decided to hang Matthias Mpuga to the next tree, to the nearest tree, <laughs> is, is very unfortunate. Today it has made them weaker and it has not made them stronger. So Matthias Mpuga is a victim of circumstance. But Njala, the biggest question is, Honestly speaking, can these MPs award themselves 500 million shillings when teachers are earning 200,000? Can the Speaker of Parliament earn 600 million a month? Now, that, that, 600 that's the, million a month. Now, that's the gist of the angle. Yes. Why would Mpuga, a member of the opposition, be part of a process that would award him all this money? But not only Mpuga. Mpuga, 500 million. The backbench commissioner, solo ones, 400 million. The Speaker of Parliament, 600 million a month. So why are we only focusing on Mpuga? This is where the debate should go. How can someone earn 20 million shillings a day? This well, is abuse of office. There is no court that has sat to pass judgment on our beloved deputy president, the Honorable Matthias Mpuga. And I am very, very saddened by the quick, reactionary, emotional uh, 
attitude by many elites against our statement that they have not interrogated. The most prestigious positions in the NUP, government positions, are the leader of opposition and the commissioner. And in the party after the president, it is the deputy president. And mark the wording, it's not vice president, it is deputy, deputy president. president. We were clear about that legal interest because we wanted independence in making decisions of particular offices and to, uh, to, to cover the gap of where an anomaly would arise in terms of power. Four deputy presidents are summoned and this meeting was particular for the crisis and the information that the Odongotos had brought to light, not in isolation of the four and the entire commission. Because in law, there is a legal regime, the lawyer here will tell us. There's what they call approbation and deprobation. Uh, you cannot uh, uh, want it to be right this side on Anita Mong, and then, no, you can't want it right on Impoga, and you want it right on Anita Among. It, 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 is, it can't work. If it is it, it is it. In the National Inter Platform, we have core values that we agree with, and these ones speak to the moral fabric. And that moral fabric, all our leaders entered into a social contract with the party and with Ugandans by swearing in ginger that they would not engage themselves in such acts. That was a contract. And all of them swore an oath of allegiance to what had been agreed on in uh, the Nile Resort uh, resolution. I in the meeting, the deputy president, the Honorable Matthias Simpuga, admitted to wrongdoing, being hoodwinked uh, by, 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 by the system, and it was wrong to take the money. However, he requested the, 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 the party mm -hmm. that lets him be given 24 hours, I want to be even exact, to prepare his family, uh, uh, to prepare his family, his team, his friends, because the party was not sacking him. It was strongly against our moral fabric, just like he has said, advising him to step aside and then we can look at rehabilitation later from maybe the National Inter Platform Training School at Kamocha. In this commission first, these are the, uh, this is the irony, it has its membership from government, from the opposition, and uh, uh, from government and from the opposition. Parliament, the deputy speaker was not in that commission, in that meeting. The Minister of Finance was not in that meeting. The Attorney General was conspicuously not in that meeting. That is passing the monies. The Prime Minister, now these are the people responsible because Article 93 of the Constitution clearly stipulates that if you're going to touch any monies from the consolidated fund, you must have approval of Parliament. And that is still also in the administrative act because in the administrative act of parliament yes the commissioner can come up with design as he has said and proposals but even after that is done those remunerations are brought to the floor of parliament and passed that is why always on different talk shows i hear people saying that the mps will unanimously be on on one side when they are passing their remuneration they all have to sit as a house if you go to the parliamentary answered it is nowhere to be seen okay I, I, then also the issue of the Leadership Code of Conduct 2002 is very clear. Section 8, Section 9, and Section 11 to the latter. One speaks about conflict of interest. Another speaks about de declaration of interest. Your disclosure, that's the legal term. Uh, sorry, the English may it be more than the legal terms. Now. Disclosure was never done. The persons who were in that committee were Anita Among, the one who, who, who sanctioned the money, and later you'll get evidence that she gave a letter of guarantee to the parliamentary circle for, the for all these people to pick the 1.4 billion. And we're not talking about Mpuga, we're talking about 1.4 billion. The reason why Mpuga is in the light is because our party morally could not stand what it was hearing and it took an advisory action. When you look at the Anti-Corruption Act, because this was criminal, and I wanted to use the law, 
uh, section, I think, two and three, still the lawyers are here, they will give the exact. It clearly stipulates on how a leader is supposed to conduct themselves. These people conducted differently. Let's look at the debts and help the country. Zake, the Honorable Zake, was sacked on the 10th. And this is when the Speaker of Parliament, the Right Honorable Jacob Olanya, was fighting for his life. And on the 18th, the late Jacob Olanya passed away. On the 8th of April, he was buried. And on the next meeting of the commission, after Anita Among had just been elected as speaker on the 25th of March, arising from the death of his boss, they are grieved, they are in grief. The Honorable Anya is, is, is not, is, is, he has left them. Then a commission sits in its first meeting, not to remember Olanya, not to discuss the burial, but to give themselves a service award, which is irregular. <coughs> this very parliament condemned the presidential handshake of six billion, where Doris Sakol and her team had helped the nation to uh, recover 1.4 trillion in a case in London. The Honorable Matthias Simpoga is on public record lambasting the system under which that had been done. Uh, in terms of how the commission gets uh, to remunerate itself and maybe to determine remuneration for members of parliament, uh, this has been an issue before, mm -hmm. and it has gone to the courts of law. It went to the constitutional court. Uh, there was, I think, uh, one individual called Wilson Mwesige. He took the parliamentary commission to the constitutional court, and his complaint was that uh, the parliamentary commission had no powers, in fact, to set the remuneration of members of parliament without consent of the executive. <coughs> Why? Because although, although Article 85 of the Constitution uh, gives parliament powers to set its remuneration, uh, that must be subject to Article 93, uh, which says nobody, no organ can charge the consolidated fund without uh, the executive. Any motion or bill uh, which is going to withdraw money from the public pass uh, has to be presented through the executive. And maybe that is why uh, the, in the membership of the commission, mm -hmm. the parliamentary commission, the minister for finance must be represented and the leader of government business. At an individual level, uh, there is an obvious issue of conflict of interest. Uh, he ought to have recused himself from that meeting at an individual level. Uh, which would have denied them quorum, by the way, because they would have remained three members. Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for the view that uh, we are going to get lost in discussing Mpuga and 500 million. Uh, and we are keeping quiet about uh, the other commissioners who have taken 1.2 billion. And then we are keeping quiet about the clearly illegal and in some cases percent fraudulent expenditures that are happening within parliament. And what we need uh, to hold Dimpuga accountable as one individual, and we forget that he can be replaced by another individual who will do the same, uh, is, is different. Mpuga is one individual in that commission. He has a minority vote in any case. If they have quorum and they agree, uh, what would he do? Maybe they will say, okay, we are approving this money for you, take it, or when it goes on your account, you return it if you don't want it. Maybe. Uh, but I think it's dangerous for us not to focus uh, on looking at this systemic problem uh, in the manner in which the parliamentary commission is behaving. Okay. And they have made a very big mistake. One, they should have internally and administratively handled the issue of Mpuga. In United Kingdom, if you have asked a minister to resign, you just wake up one morning and you see that he has resigned. The resignation should have come from Mpuga himself, that uh, for personal reasons, have decided to resign from the parliamentary commission. They should have done that inside the house. They should have persuaded him, they should have even knelt before him that you are on the wrong, but you really need to resign. We need to keep national unity platform intact. I think you're talking it, old politics. Yes. No, There's now new yeah. politics. So what they have done, they issue an unsigned statement that Matthias Mpuga should resign. I can say without fear of contradiction, that statement was in bad faith. That statement was in bad faith. There is a bigger problem inside NUP. 
which, which we cannot understand. But at the face of it, I would say that Bobby Wine does not like Matthias. I have not said he, that he hates Matthias. He does not like Matthias. It started from removing him as no, as no. and bringing a very junior MP who has been in parliament for 800 days to be the leader of opposition. That was a technical mistake with all due respect to Honorable Senior, uh, Honorable Senior who is my good friend. Then after that, the next problem, Matthias, uh, the problem comes and uh, you, you again start attacking Matthias Mpuga. So what does it cause? National unity platform should know they are the firstborn in Uganda. They are the leading opposition party in the country. Ugandans are looking up to them. All the traditional parties have given way. DP, UPC, FDC. I'm glad I left FDC. FDC is almost falling. I struggle hard so that it does not fall on my head. I saw the house falling two years ago. So the mistake national unity platform is making, even FDC has bigger problems, but they don't solve it the way the NUP is doing. So they have made a mistake. They have handled Matthias Mpuga recklessly. Matthias Mpuga has a right of reply. He's not going to lie down and give away. So the entire country, I can speak from the north where I stay, where there was a little bit of hope coming in NUP because there is no immediate alternative. Their conduct on handling the issue of Matthias Mpuga has clearly indicated to Ugandans that they have more problems to solve. Now, let me talk as a philo political philosopher. We are having a situation where artists are taking into the political scene, not only in Buganda. This other man went and defeated Amelia Chambade. He's, he's called... Uh, 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 Hilda, man. Hilda. Bobby Wine is in parliament. In Acholi, we have one artist called Boss Mikotim. He contested for Parliament of Chua. So we are having a wave where people think popularity is equivalent to seniority. Jose Chameleon contested for mayor of Kampala. So they, they think stardom, they think popularity is equivalent to, to political fame. So we are now seeing a situation where a national unity platform is making a very painful mistake. I'm even going to call Bobby Wine after here. The cheapest option they have for now is to reconcile with Matthias Mpuga. That is the cheapest option. What they are doing of saying Matthias Mpuga should resign is like hitting a mosquito with an atomic bomb. The problem is bigger than that. What about the person taking 600 million a month? You are hanging the one who is taking 500 million in two and a half years. 